The Florida Constitution has been revised six times in its entire history, and when I mention this fact to other people, it flies straight over their heads. To put this into context for you, the United States Constitution has never been revised. Never ever. Even if there's a fire. And the U.S. Constitution is a much older document than the Florida Constitution. 50 years older. Now I'm not talking about an amendment to the Constitution, which we can define as a minor change or addition to a document. It can look like adding on to a Constitution or even removing lines from a Constitution. We are talking about revision, and revision is essentially replacing one Constitution with another. And like we said earlier, the U.S. Constitution is in its original form, but the Florida Constitution has been revised six times. And so the big question we have today is, what the heck happened where we had to revise our Constitution this many times? I mean, that's got to be a record, right? Hold on, let me check this out. Mmm. Not even close. Well, it turns out there's one state that's revised their constitution much more than Florida, and that would be the state of Louisiana. But you can see that Florida is not alone in this weirdness. The state of Alabama and South Carolina have both revised their constitutions six times, the state of Virginia has done it seven times, and Georgia has done it nine times. Nine times? Nine times. On the flip side, there's 19 states that have never revised their constitution, meaning it's in its original form. And that would be Alaska, Arizona, Colorado, Hawaii, Idaho, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Nevada, New Mexico, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Oregon, South Dakota, Vermont, Washington, West Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. And if we look more closely, we're going to begin to see a pattern, especially when we include states that have only revised their constitution one time. Are we starting to see a pattern here? Florida's revisions actually make sense when you consider the timeline of events. So let's go back in time and take a closer look. In 1513, Ponce de Leon discovers Florida for Spain. Fast forward to 1819 and Florida becomes a U.S. territory when Spain literally gives it up for virtually nothing. Just here take this uninhabitable swamp and rebellious tribe of Seminoles and just take it. It's yours. But that was not enough to make Florida a state. In order to be a state, the territory of Florida needed to write its own constitution, approve it, and then have the U.S. Congress vote on a joint resolution granting statehood, along with the president signing the resolution. And so that's what they did. 56 prominent Floridians got together in the coastal town of St. Joseph in 1838 and started drafting up the document. The document was then presented to the people and they voted to ratify it. And it made its ratification vote just barely. And then they proceeded to wait seven patient years until they were admitted into the nation as a new state in 1845. The president who signed the resolution was none other than John Tyler, who if you give an imperial badge to, basically looks like Grand Moff Tarkin. Congratulations, Florida. Your state is now fully operational. You may fire when ready. Florida was finally a part of the team, becoming the 27th state in the Union. Just 15 years later, Abraham Lincoln is elected president in 1860. Many Floridians interpreted the election of Lincoln as a dangerous step towards the abolition of slavery. So the Florida legislature called a convention of the people. Should we stay or should we go? And when they voted in 1861, 62 delegates said we should leave the nation and only two voted to stay. And so Florida becomes the third state to leave the Union following South Carolina and Mississippi. Seeing as they were no longer part of the Union, the state of Florida needed to rewrite its constitution, eliminating all instances of the word United States. They made a number of other changes to it, including the terms of office of their government positions. Florida's second constitution is called the Ordinance of Secession, and in it they write, We the people of the state of Florida, in convention assembled, do solemnly ordain, publish, and declare that the state of Florida hereby withdraw herself from the Confederacy of States existing under the name of the United United States of America. Congratulations, Florida, you've officially left the team. Good luck being your own country.
for years later. Well, after getting their butts kicked in the Civil War, Florida and other Confederate states became occupied by the Union military. Hoping to return the former Confederate states to the Union as quickly as possible, President Andrew Johnson, who reincarnated later in life as Tommy Lee Jones, well, he declares, all former Confederate states are now districts of the country and must offer two tributes per district to fight to the death in the Hunger Games. Well, while I'm sure he was tempted to do something like that, instead he puts Judge William Marvin of Key West as provisional governor and directs him to call a constitutional convention for the people. At the convention, the delegates annul the Ordinance of Secession and frame a new state constitution that recognizes the end of slavery. Good job, Florida. You've put yourself back on the team. Three years later. Well, the life of Constitution 3.0 was a short one because the Republican majority in Congress was very unsatisfied with the former Confederate states' limited acceptance of freedom for African Americans. Remember, Florida basically ratified its own constitution saying, hey, yeah, I think that we're good to be back in the Union again. What about you? Approved. And so they passed the Reconstruction Acts over President Johnson's veto and reestablished military control in the South. This is not something easy to do, but Congress was very unified in understanding that many of these southern states simply wrote a new constitution to be admitted back into the Union and didn't really believe in the abolition of slavery. So they overrode the veto and the Reconstruction Acts say states must, before being admitted into the Union, create a new constitution which must be ratified by U.S. Congress. And so a convention of the people was called for again to create a new constitution, this time recognizing the equality of all men of any race. Congress officially declared Florida back in the Union later that year on July 25th, 1868. So congratulations, Florida. You're a state again. Satisfied now that Florida and most of the southern states had changed their tune on slavery, the Union Army withdraws from the state of Florida, and by the early 1880s, conservative Democrats who controlled state politics had their opportunity to reverse some of the old document's provisions. Essentially, with nobody watching them, the state lawmakers were now free to make changes that they wanted to see in a new constitution. You know, things that wouldn't really undo the abolition of slavery, but would come as legally close to that as possible. So they revised the document to include the segregation of public schools, they legalized poll taxes, and prohibited the intermarriage between whites and African Americans. Yikes. The scary part is, is this was widely approved by the people. So that's the story about Constitution 5.0. So good job, no, I can't even say good job about this. But don't worry, these constitutions last like an average of five years, so they'll rewrite it again, right? Well, wrong. This constitution lasts for 83 years. Let that sink into your brain. For the better part of a century in the state of Florida, we existed under Jim Crow law. In 1968, after the Civil Rights Movement, Florida finally comes to its senses and revises its constitution for a sixth time. Everything except one section is thrown away in the trash and completely rewritten. Sections on voting, marriage, and elections are all updated to comply with the Civil Rights Acts. And a new section is added in Article 8 about local government. I guess they never included any information about local governments in all five previous iterations of the document. And that takes us from the very beginning of Florida becoming an officially recognized state all the way up to present day. So there you have it, an explanation for why Florida has revised its governing document so many times. From its acceptance into the Union as a slave state, through the tumultuous Civil War and Reconstruction periods, the document has gone through its fair share of changes. And you'd like to think that these were changes a long, long time ago, but sadly that's not the case. The good news is, a change was made. A revision was made to the document to update it to our societal standards of today. When will the next revision be? 
With the state of Florida, you never can tell. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks so much for sticking to the end of my video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. We'll make more videos soon.